So, to sum up, there are a lot of exciting things to look forward to. This year, we will see the release of the last chapter to Eivor's story in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Then in 2023, we'll see the release of the next big title, Assassin's Creed Mirage. Then it's time for the long-awaited setting of Canada with Assassin's Creed Maple. Following the story of Miso, from lousy home cook to assassin chef. But our tastiest announcement of all takes place in the kitchen for Assassin's Creed The Culinary Codex. Check out this sneak peek. World Premiere Okay, I'm obviously joking about Assassin's Creed Toronto, but the Assassin's Creed cookbook is the real deal. Assassin's Creed The Culinary Codex by Thibaut Villanova embarks us on a journey spanning the multitude of diverse locations and eras visited in the long and storied series that is Assassin's Creed. Right away you'll notice the wonderful visual design of the cookbook, the foil stamped Assassin's Creed logo in the front is stunning, and this book is much taller than the other cookbooks I own which gives it a premium feel and that added page space really makes the photos feel epic and larger than life. The recipes are categorized in chapters that each represent a game in the series. Each chapter starts with a brief bio of the game's main assassin protagonist, that's followed by a brief overview of their locale with the recipes following after. I love skimming through the pages of this cookbook and it made me really nostalgic of all of the different cultures and time periods represented in the games and it made me appreciate just how enduring this franchise is. And the recipes in this cookbook look legit gourmet. Compared to the average gaming cookbook, I think the dishes here are a bit more complex in terms of flavors and preparation. As an average home cook, I do find some of the recipes here a tad bit intimidating but encouraging me to cook outside of my comfort zone might be a good thing cause Damn, this food looks hella gourmet. I knew those fancy assassins were bougie AF. In terms of contents, the cookbook shares recipes for all Assassin's Creed main series and spin-off games up until Assassin's Creed Origins. So there's no mentions of Odyssey's Alexios and Cassandra or Valhalla's Eivor. The reason for this is because this cookbook was actually originally released 5 years ago in 2017 before those games came out and was only recently translated to English in 2022. I've actually been wanting to check out this cookbook for years now, but the original release was only available in French. However, my French is pretty bad because I didn't pay attention in French class growing up here in Canada. I still really want to better my French though since it's our second language and it's everywhere here so that's why I started relearning French through Rosetta Stone which is the sponsor of today's video. What I really like about Rosetta Stone as a language learning app is that it taps into your brain's natural ability to learn a new language. Instead of boring old translation and memorization, Rosetta Stone relies on immersion and engages you in a way where you're seeing, hearing, reading, and speaking speaking the language you're learning so it feels less like studying and more like you're actually practicing it. Est-ce que vous parlez français? Est-ce que vous parlez français? I'm a visual learner so I find that the pictures make the words and phrases really easy to understand. I feel like I'm absorbing the meaning based on the subtle word and image changes over time and it helps it stick for me. I'm hoping that at the end of this maybe reading French wouldn't be such a struggle for me anymore and I wouldn't have to wait 5 years to get something translated to English. Want to chat up the locals while you're traveling? Watch anime without subs? Read cookbooks from a different language? Whatever it is, it's always useful to learn a new language, so try out Rosetta Stone and click the link in the description to get a discount on their $299 lifetime subscription for just $179 with a 30-day refund to start your language learning journey. Now in our Assassin's Creed culinary journey, we are starting off where it all started. Assassin's Creed 1's Altair hailed from the Syrian city of Masyaf, where he likely had many servings of Masyaf Mutabel, which is an eggplant spread with tahini and lemon. For this, we will need two eggplants. Rinse and cut them lengthwise with your hidden blade, just like how I'm doing it. Okay, this is clearly not safe, so I'm gonna give up on this bit and turn my hidden blade into a regular old kitchen knife. Cut the eggplant in half lengthwise and sprinkle some kosher salt on the cut side and let it rest for 15 minutes so that the salt can draw out the moisture. Then rinse off the salt under cold water and place them on a baking sheet. Pop the eggplant in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. When done, let the eggplant cool down, then scoop out the insides to a bowl. 
This is where I struggle though since I expected the eggplant to be really mushy and scoopable but I found that the exterior parts got dry and hard. I was still able to scoop out some of the contents but it's a lot stringier than what I think I need but I'll proceed with the recipe. Add in one clove of finely chopped garlic, one finely chopped onion, two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, two tablespoons of tahini, and the juice of one lemon. Then you're supposed to mix it all in until it's a smooth cream, then season with salt and pepper. But this is not a smooth cream at all. I don't know where I went wrong, but I'm going to have to use some extra assistance from a hand blender to get that same consistency I saw in the book. For any Mutabel experts out there, let me know where I messed up in the comments, please. Now let's hang out with my personal favorite assassin, Ezio Auditore, in Renaissance Italy where we will relive some Memories of Constantinople, which is a lamb and beef lasagna with eggplant, caviar, and mint. Let's start with a really fancy sounding eggplant caviar. In a Dutch oven, heat up a drizzle of olive oil over medium heat, then add in two onions and one shallot, both cut in a brunoise, which is a fancy way of saying tiny cubes around two millimeters in size. Add in a finely diced celery stalk and two cloves of chopped garlic. Cook these all up and when it all starts to brown, add in three eggplants cut into small cubes. Mix it all together, cover, and cook over low heat for five minutes. Then add in a two-third cup of vegetable broth and cook for another five to six minutes to get the eggplant to break down. Then add in 10 minced mint leaves and a half bunch of chopped fresh parsley. Add some salt and pepper to taste, mix well, and remove from the heat. Use a few pulses of an immersion blender and that should be your rich, luxurious eggplant caviar. Let's make the rest of the filling. In a bowl, put in half a cup of fresh breadcrumbs, then add in three and a half tablespoons of milk, 10 and a half ounces of ground beef, 10 and a half ounces of ground lamb, one egg, one teaspoon of ground cumin, and generously season with salt and pepper. Mix it all up. Once mixed, add in 10 chopped mint leaves and three and a half tablespoons of lemon or lime juice and make sure it's all well incorporated. Let's go back to the Dutch oven from before. Scoop out most of the eggplant caviar and in that same pot, drizzle in some more olive oil and heat it over medium heat. Then add in the mixed filling and brown the meat for four minutes so that it's cooked, but not dry. Then mix in the eggplant caviar and when mixed well, remove it from the heat and set aside. Now let's cook some lasagna noodles. In a large pot of salted water, cook a couple of sheets at a time so that they don't stick and leave them until they're al dente. When cooked, remove them from the pot and transfer to a bowl of cold water to prevent them from sticking to each other. The last component we're gonna make is the cheese mixture, which is super easy. Combine three quarter cup of ricotta cheese with three quarter cup of sour cream, add a drizzle of olive oil, a pinch of salt and pepper, and lemon or lime juice and mix everything well. Now it's finally time to assemble our lasagna. In a buttered or oiled baking dish, line the bottom with a layer of lasagna noodles, then spread out a layer of meat, then a layer of the ricotta, then lasagna, meat, and finish it up with a layer of ricotta on top. Pop this in the oven at 410 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. Took some time and effort, but finally we have the memories of Constantinople. Our last stop takes us across the ocean as we go swashbuckling in the Caribbean with Edward Kenway plundering treasures and eating some buccaneers bananas along the way. First we start with a vanilla bean, split it open in the middle and scrape off the insides with a knife, then set these aside. Now prepare four ripe bananas and cut these lengthwise. Now in a frying pan melt one and three quarter tablespoons of lightly salted butter over medium heat. Toss in the vanilla bean pot and the bananas when the butter is hot. Sprinkle over two teaspoons of vanilla sugar. The cookbook's recipe for this is pretty much just vanilla bean and super fine sugar, but it needs two weeks to flavorize, so I'm just gonna be using one I've already made a while back, which is already full of vanilla goodness. Add another two teaspoons of super fine sugar in the scraped up vanilla seeds. Cook this until the bananas are nice and caramelized. Lastly, pour three and a half tablespoons of dark rum and grab your lighter because now it's flambe time. I've never flambeed before, so I hope I don't burn my kitchen. Here goes. Ooh, fire. When the theatrics are done and the fire goes out, serve your buccaneers bananas to your mateys. Yar. Now that we have a meal fit for the brotherhood, let's eat. Starting with the Masyaf Mutabel, I was really looking forward to this, but I know I messed up the consistency, so I'm a bit wary. Tasting it definitely was not what I was expecting. 
The flavor of the onion and the lemon hit me like a ton of bricks and the consistency wasn't as smooth as I'd like. I couldn't really taste the eggplant since I found that it was overpowered by the other flavors. Apparently the main difference between Mutabel and Baba Ganoush is that Mutabel has tahini in it, but I found that the tahini in this one didn't really do much and it got kind of lost in the mix. It's so weird because I feel like I followed the recipe to the T and I know I messed up, but I don't exactly know how to fix it, especially baking the eggplant in a way that it's creamy and not meaty. Again, if you have any pointers to help me out, let me know in the comments, please. Not off to a great start, but the lasagna looks mighty promising. Can I redeem myself and bring justice to the greatness of eggplant? Let me tell you, this is pretty damn good. Regular lasagna is usually rich and heavy, whereas this tastes very light and almost refreshing, but yet still creamy. The texture of the eggplant caviar with the meat is lovely and the mint is a great aromatic accent. Do I like it more than regular lasagna? To be honest, no, because it, when it comes to pasta, I always gravitate towards tomato-based sauces, but for an alternative, this is very good. I know I'm going to be enjoying these leftovers for the rest of the week, that's for sure. For dessert, let's try these flambéed Buccaneers bananas. Will I go bananas for it? Yeah, it's pretty good. Bananas are nice and creamy and the sugary rum coating is decadent and delicious. Extremely easy and simple to put together, yet fun and eye-catching. This was my first time flambéing and I can't wait to do it again. The only thing this is missing is some ice cream. Final verdict for the Assassin's Creed cookbook. Cooking out of your comfort zone, but in a good way.